Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video here at Eat Sleep Brief. So in this week's episode everyone, what we are going to be covering is a coral I really enjoy. It's something I really like and I thought it was worth uh, pretty much having its own topic uh, on this specific coral. So if you guys wondering, so what exactly are we going to be talking about today? So today we're going to be digging in. Um, in pretty good detail as far as scolies are concerned. So scolies for you guys that aren't aware are pretty much they kind of look like a donut. Um, you know you've probably seen them at the LFS, seen them online. They're not the cheapest coral um, but really for the size you're getting um, they're not small they're a decent sized coral um, and we're going to get a little bit more into the care level of them. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking, you know, they're in about the 250 uh, range. Obviously, there's some more expensive. There's some, you know, you, I've seen some bleeding apples go for like 180, 150. Um, so yeah, there's there's uh, different colors of them. There's different variation, different patterns. Uh, one thing I really like about Scully corals, um, they're what I consider an instant gratification coral. So you may be saying, so what the heck's an instant gratification coral? Well, there's few corals in our hobby um, that you can literally take out of the water, put, dip them back in the water, and they kind of essentially look the same. You know, unlike zoas, um, unlike euphilia, it, if soon as you move those or any current, different current comes past them, uh, they'll shrink up, they'll shrivel up, and pretty much they won't look even close to what they look like when they're fully open. Um, you know, like ch chalices are other corals that I call um, instant gratification corals. Uh, so yeah, pretty much a scoli, you can take it out from your LFS or from your buddy's tank, whatever the case is, wherever you purchase it from. Um, you can take it out, put it in your tank, and it's pretty much going to look identical. Um, the only change you're really going to get in it, it's going to shrink up a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, you're going to see the same uh, depth of color from it. Um, you know, you're only going to notice it just a little bit more shriveled up um, from wherever you got it. So that's kind of why I call them instant gratification corals. It's just a coral you can add. Uh, the moment you put it in, it's going to look pretty much identical to uh, where you picked it up from. You know, unlike other corals um, like Gonopora, Zoas, um, Euphilia. Uh, and a few other coral, they take a few days to really open up so you can see its true colors, its true shape, um, and really what it's going to look like. So I know a lot of you guys out there are probably asking yourself, what is the care level on these scoli corals you talk of, or maybe you've seen, or maybe you've had an eye on? Um, honestly, they're a very easy coral to keep. Um, but then again, I kind of believe that on most corals in the hobby, um, really all that corals are looking for in our reef tank are very simple. They're looking for stable numbers. Um, with that being said, you know, scolies aren't difficult to keep. Um, they will handle some swings better than others, which I'm going to dig um, a little bit deeper on based on my experiences. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, the scoli uh, is considered an easy coral. So, you know, if you are a beginner and your tank's been running for at least six months, um, I'd say, you know, go ahead and jump on it. If you're keeping up with your water change regimen or your dosing regimen, whatever the case is, uh, you're probably going to have uh, pretty good luck with them. They're not very difficult. And like I said, you can maintain them just with basic uh, weekly or bi-weekly water changes uh, in your reef tank. So um, as far as lighting is concerned, so lighting in this is a little bit um, um, of what I was aware of before I got into it, but also my experience. Uh, generally speaking, they'll accept, uh, you know, if you do have a PAR meter, um, I've, I've put mine as low as like 80s, 70s, 80s, been perfectly fine. Um, I've put them as high as like 250. You know, I've really cranked my, my lights up, you know, just to kind of, you know, do some testing. And I've seen them really, um, you know, not change much at all. So generally speaking, they'll accept anywhere from, uh, you know, about 80, 70, all the way up to about 250. And to be honest with you, they can probably accept a little bit higher given that you acclimate them and you don't just uh, throw them into a highlight environment. But generally speaking, 
they're okay with low to medium uh, lighting so you don't need any crazy lightings or you know you don't need to put them in an area um, that's you know very concentrated with light since we're on the topic of area slash placement if you guys wondering so where exactly would you place a scully so generally speaking in the reef tank you're gonna always see them on the sand bed or kind of where the rock meets the sand um, you know generally I've very rarely seen people put them up on rocks uh, it's not that you can't have them there it's just they take up quite a bit of room um, so generally speaking people will kind of use them um, as fillers on the sand bed or just to add a really nice pop to the sand bed because uh, generally our sands are white so pretty much any color you put there is just going to look amazing um, and scullies are really full, uh, filled with color I think that's why a lot of people go after them uh, they're just so vibrant uh, and very nice to look at and again not to mention they're an instant gratification coral um, so now that we covered lighting and placement as far as flow is concerned uh, again, generally speaking, you want to keep them on low to mid flow. If we are talking mid, you do not want direct flow on these guys. Um, they do not like that. They kind of like like passing overflow, if that makes any sense. Um, but they do very good in low flow um, to mid flow. Um, I wouldn't put them in a place where there's not, not much flow at all because these types of corals, you're going to notice towards... Um, the ramp down of your lights or the afternoons they the, the feeding tentacles tend to come out so when the feeding tentacles come out that's when they grab particles uh, so if the flow is a little bit too slow they may not have um, enough particles circulating through there for them to capture it so thus they may have to fall back to uh, you feeding them so since we're on the topic of feeding you guys may be wondering do you have to feed this core well generally speaking most corals in our hobby you don't need to feed them directly um, they'll eat organics floating in the water or just you know food left over from the fish or whatever the case is but i've noticed in my specific tank with the scolies i've had feeding them once to twice a week is what really gets them popping really gets them big fluffy um, and keeps those colors vibrant um, my feeding regimen um, and I've shared it with you guys in the past. Um, I use polyp lab rephroids. Uh, I'll either do that on its own, uh, just mix it in a really thick paste, or sometimes I'll also do that with uh, rods food. So I'll mix it in with rods foods, put, put some polyp lab rephroids, um, and also some polyp booster. I forgot about that. Typically, I I've talked about it before, but I love using polyp booster in the tank because it really gets corals like this, uh, gets her feeding tentacles out and ready to accept food. Um, you don't need the polyp booster, but if you, you know, if you want to get it and you want to see how meaty corals like this react, you're going to love it. So yeah, generally for me, I feed them twice a week and I've noticed better results uh, direct feeding them. Um, you physically want to get a piece of shrimp or just a piece of uh, Reefroids and put it into the mouth of the coral. Now there is a technique for feeding these guys that I found out that I'm going to very quickly let you guys know. Uh, when you are feeding a scoli, it takes about 30 seconds, maybe quicker, but it generally takes about 30 seconds for them to react and really open up the mouth. So what I'll do, I'll sprinkle a little bit of food on them, wait about 30 seconds. Once the mouth is fully open, then I'll put a uh, you know little piece of shrimp or whatever the case is I'm feeding now when it comes to feeding guys and this is goes across the board for any coral you can overfeed them um, there's certain corals out there that are easier to overfeed than others a scoli is one of them if you put a big piece of whatever uh, let's say shrimp in its mouth it'll grab it and more than likely you can kill it if it's too big of a piece so um, just be careful uh, you know, don't give it a big, big piece of shrimp. I mean, you know, keep it moderate. Uh, pretend it was a fish. You know, wh whatever the fish could eat in, you know, two mouthfuls, that's generally what I'll, what I'll feed it. Um, but yeah, another thing you guys are going to notice, uh, but I can't really touch on because I've never experienced it, is when they start receding. So generally speaking, 
these corals when they get stressed out they'll start receding as you can see here um, and I've noticed not in my tank but in talking to other people I've noticed they don't like phosphate swings and we're talking big swings not little swings um, also they absolutely hate 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 alkalinity swings um, when we're talking one to two I mean not one decay probably like two to three decay they absolutely hate that um, but generally if you do stress it out if you do have a coral like this it's receding stop moving it don't move it too much you know don't mess with it because that's only going to make the stress level worse try to keep your numbers as stable as possible more importantly direct feed it because it's absolutely going to love it if you direct feed it um, one thing i do also like about the scolies is they're not an aggressive coral at all they're very peaceful they don't have like sweeper tentacles or anything of that sort with that being said being a coral that doesn't really fight it can get stung and they're very susceptible to that once they get stung you know it can take a while for the flesh to really recover so just be careful where you place it and these corals guys once they get happy believe it or not they'll expand two to three times uh, their original size I know mine does ever since I got it this thing is easily two times as big uh, when it's really happy uh, so just keep that in mind when you are placing it uh, be careful where you place it you don't have to be worried about it stinging other corals but look out for other corals stinging it um, because once these things gets uh, gets stung it's pretty hard for them to recover so guys I think I've blabbered enough uh, here in this video uh, hopefully I shared some good topics for you guys especially you guys looking to get into a scoli um, so I guess pretty much the whole uh, talk I had here today if you are on the fence and your tank is you know at least guys I, I know some of you don't want to wait six months at least give it four months uh, for your tank to really be consistent um, and if you're on top of your water changes uh, your you know your nitrates are good your phosphates are good you know go out there buy one you're gonna enjoy it and just remember guys try to direct feed it uh, one to twice a week I do it twice a week and you're gonna have great results you know, keep your water stable, and I guarantee you're going to have success with the Scully. So guys, we're going to leave this video here. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, guys, please subscribe. Uh, give me a like if you loved it. If you didn't, you know, go ahead, leave me the dislike. Um, we're quickly approaching 10,000 followers, everyone. I uh, want to thank each and every one of you that have become a part of that on my Instagram believe it or not we're just about to surpass 20,000 followers probably by tomorrow so again guys I want to thank you very much for tuning in hopefully you learned something as always guys thanks for watching happy reefing